Hi everyone and welcome to the next chess video. I thought we'd delve back into history for this one and selected a fantastic game from the historic encounter between Louis Charles de La Bourdonnais and Alexander MacDonald in 1834. To give a bit of backdrop to the game, La Bourdonnais was a French aristocrat and widely regarded as the strongest player in the world at the time. Paul Morphy was only two years old in that year. MacDonnell was from Belfast, Northern Ireland, and had a great reputation as a strong and aggressive player. A match was arranged between them in 1834 and took place at Westminster in London. There were no time controls and the games often lasted over seven hours, with MacDonnell taking as much as two hours on single moves. He was a silent and nervous character. La Bourdonnais, on the contrary, was a quick player, loud mouth, and heavy drinker and cigar smoker. They played six matches during the course of the year and over eighty games. Chess was still within its romantic era and the pair had some great attacking and dynamic games. This game is from the fourth match. La Bourdonnais had white and opened with d4 which was slightly unusual he played e4 on most occasions but was not averse to opening with his queen's pawn too macdonald responded symmetrically with d5 and after c4 and d takes c4 we have gone into a queen's gambit accepted which is rarely seen nowadays at top level overall throughout history it scores equally with the slav variation of the queen's gambit declined with the move uh, c6 here instead. And the drawback of this move is that it allows white the ideal pawn center immediately if he so desires, which La Bourdonnais did and played e4. And in practice it's virtually impossible for black to hold on to the extra pawn from this position and the question could reasonably be raised as to why therefore he's willing to resign the center on the second move of the game. The point is that white will have to use time in order to win the pawn back and black will have a freer time with development and counter-attacking ideas. MacDonald struck in the center immediately with e5 which has remained the main line in this variation to this day. Le Bourdonnais chose to advance his pawn with d5 which looks like something of a premature overextension and is considered suboptimal nowadays with knight f3 being the preferred option. So d5 and f5 was MacDonald's continuation, again the main line. It's a logical choice aiming to undermine the support of the d5 pawn and a sharp idea too, accepting some kingside weaknesses for dynamic compensation down the f file. La Bourdonnais now got the first piece into the game with knight c3 and this makes sense as it defends both of his pawns in particular the weak d5 pawn which will almost certainly become a strategical liability and MacDonald continued with knight f6 which is um, adding to the pressure on e4 which La Bourdonnais was evidently willing to give up as he now regained the pawn he is down with the bishop takes c4 and MacDonald didn't take on e4 but got another piece into the game himself with bishop c5 which is bearing down on the weak f2 pawn and you know it wouldn't have been too difficult for white to win the pawn back again if he'd taken on um, you know e4 instead and really it's preferable for black to maintain the pressure on the white position instead. We can have a quick look out of curiosity if instead uh, f takes e4 here and now bishop g5 which you know is pinning the defender of the e4 pawn a logical move although the implication is that white will give up the bishop pair and black can continue simply with knight bd7 because after knight takes e4 he has uh, bishop b4 check which is annoying for white to deal with 
Other than an undesirable king move, he can block the check with his knight, but this leaves black with a niggling edge. It may be better for white to castle before he tries to regain the pawn, but as before in the earlier stage of the opening, white will lose time in the process. However, MacDonald didn't choose this continuation and elected to maintain the tension, which is generally the best course of action unless relieving it will lead to some other form of advantage. And though there's some here for black, MacDonald clearly did not think it was enough to uh, release the tension. So he instead played bishop c5. And uh, La Bourdonnais continued with knight f3 which, you know, in turn is pressurizing the backward e5 pawn and preparing to castle soon. And the computer thought that he could have equalized the position immediately with uh, e takes f5, giving the line bishop takes f5, knight f3, and knight bd7 as equal, but as in the last line, this takes the tension out of the game, as well as giving black easy development for his pieces. So it's easy to understand the choice of La Bordonnais with his uh, knight f3 now. So MacDonald now chose queen e7 which is a good move. It's defending e5 and threatening bishop takes f2 check and if a king takes f2 queen c5 check which is going to pick up the loose bishop on c4 which you know is typical romantic tactics and this equalizes the game immediately for black but perhaps stronger was knight takes e4 which definitely gives black a small edge it looks like pawn grabbing but as the game progresses white will get the material back but be left with an inferior position best play continues knight takes e4 f takes e4 knight takes e5 white wins the pawn back but only momentarily because now comes bishop takes f2 check king takes f2 and queen f6 check picking up the piece back and leaving black with a small advantage after knight f3 and uh, you know white's gonna lose the knight anyway so you may as well get a pawn back for it but as I said black will retain a small edge here as one might expect given the position so we'll go back to the game continuation queen e7 and uh, La Bordonnet played bishop g5 which pins the knight but allows black the tactical shot I mentioned after uh, queen e7 which is bishop takes f2 check aiming for uh, queen c5 next uh, Le Bourdonnais however had other ideas than allowing his opponent this activity and played king f1 but this is weaker than taking the bishop we can have a look king takes f2 queen c5 check king e1 queen takes c4 and now white has knight takes e5 which you know restores material equality and gains a tempo on the black queen in the process after for example queen c5 comes bishop takes f6 threatening queen h5 check next which is very dangerous for black but here mcdonald has the intermezzo queen e3 check and i believe it is this move that discouraged la bordonnet from taking the bishop and you know it's disruptive move for the white position and will probably result in a queen exchange and end games from this position should favor white but it was the romantic era of chess and simplifying to a winning ending was not how chess was played so let us return to the game continuation which is king f1 and uh, now mcdonald simply plays bishop b6 and you know this bishop is posted on an excellent diagonal which is impossible to oppose right away if um, knight a4 for example then uh, f takes e4 gives white some serious problems la bordonnet selected instead queen e2 which is a good multi-purpose move it bolsters his e4 pawn as well as adding latent pressure to black's e5 pawn and allowing bishop e3 if white wants it to neutralize the powerful bishop on b6 of blacks mcdonald wanted to maintain his bishop and so he played f4 now which is again what the computer recommends and after this move there is no way to deal with the b6 bishop without heading without handing 
black a bigger edge. Knight a4 can now be met with bishop e3 and wasting two moves to play bishop f4 sorry bishop h4 to f2 is a luxury that white cannot afford so he elected instead for rook d1 aiming for d file play and pressure which is a good idea per se as black cannot castle thanks to the setup of the white position and, you know if he castles now then the d6 push will come with check from the bishop on c4 and pick up the queen um, so MacDonald continued instead with bishop g4 which is a strong move and one that shows an evident strategy of taking on f3 and creating play and a strong grip on the dark central squares having played rook d1 Labordene now played it dynamically and sacrificed a pawn with d6 and all of his pieces are starting to come dangerously alive. It's a sacrifice with positional ideas in mind as after c takes d6 which MacDonald played Labordene will have use of the d5 outpost for his pieces as his pawn sacrifice has vacated that square and you know as well as that he has ongoing pressure against the backward d6 pawn and uh, you know total control of the d5 square which prevents black from advancing the d6 pawn to liquidate the weakness unless he wants to sacrifice a pawn back which would almost certainly be dangerous and unsound there's good compensation for the two pawns that white is down here but certainly not enough to justify totally sacrificing both of them just yet Labordone started using the outpost immediately in order to exploit the pin on the f6 knight with knight d5 which apparently is finally going to solve the problem of the powerful b6 bishop if white wants to do so as this move forks in the queen 